Good morning, everybody. I'm Brother Joe, and welcome to Morning Prayer on behalf of the Episcopal Church of Newman in the Edgewater neighborhood of Chicago. This ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Um, welcome to Google Meet, and for now, we will um, ask participants to mute their microphones. It's up to you whether or not you want to mute your video. Comments can be made by clicking on, if you're on your computer, on the lower right-hand corner of your screen, there's a little bubble down there um, to uh, add prayer requests later when we're in the community prayers section of morning prayer. It's our custom to light a candle to signify God's presence. Um, and I'm going to do that now. You're welcome to do that at home as well, if you'd like. If you don't have a prayer book at home, we follow the structure of prayer of the Brotherhood of St. Gregory Daily Office app in your computer or in your tablet or on your phone, just in the URL line, put dailyoffice.app. It'll take you there. A couple important settings within the app is um, to set the uh, Lord's Prayer to traditional language and the Psalm cycle to the 30-day Psalm cycle. In the upper right-hand corner, there's three small bars or three small lines. If you touch or click on there, it will take you to the settings page. For those of you who are using a prayer book, I'm going to give you some page numbers now and some page numbers along the way. Morning prayer begins on page 80 of the prayer book, followed by the Vanity on page 82. Canticles today are going to be Canticles 16 and 21. Canticle 16 is on page 92 of the prayer book and Canticle 21 on page 95. One single psalm today, it will be Psalm 105, parts 1 and 2, starting on page 738 of the prayer book. And then the general thanksgiving will be on page 101. So take a moment here. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the, the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Together, let us pray Psalm 105, starting on page 738 of the prayer book. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. And speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant. The promise he made for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham. The oath that he swore to Isaac. Which he established as a statute for Jacob. An everlasting covenant for Israel. 
saying, to you will I give the land of Canaan to be your allotted inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account and sojourners in the land, wandering from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another, he let no one oppress them, and rebuked kings for their sake, saying, Do not touch my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Then he called for a famine in the land, and destroyed the supply of bread. And a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave, they bruised his feet in fetters, his neck they put in an iron collar, until his prediction came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will, and to teach his elders wisdom. Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies, whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. They worked his signs among them and portents in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and it grew dark. But the Egyptians rebelled against his words. He turned their waters into blood and caused their fish to die. Their land was overrun by frogs in the very chambers of their kings. He spoke and there came swarms of insects and gnats within all their borders. He gave them hailstones instead of rain and flames of fire throughout their land. He blasted their vines and their fig trees and shattered every tree in their country. He spoke and the locust came and young locusts without number which ate up all the green plants in their land and devoured the fruit of their soil. He struck down the firstborn of their land, the first fruits of all their strength. He led out his people with silver and gold. In all their tribes, there was not one that stumbled. Egypt was glad of their going because they were afraid of them. He spread out a cloud for a covering and a fire to give light in the night season. They asked and quails appeared and he satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened the rock and the water flowed. So the river ran in the dry places. For God remembered his holy word and Abraham his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness, with his chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the lands of the nations, and they took the fruit of others' toil, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Joshua. 
On the seventh day, they rose early at dawn and marched around the city in the same manner seven times. It was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. And at the seventh time, when the priests had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city and all that is in it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who were with her in her house shall live because she hid the messengers we sent. As for you, keep away from the things devoted to destruction, so as not to covet and take any of the devoted things make and make the camp of Israel an object for destruction, bringing trouble upon it. But all the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord. They shall go into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted, and the trumpets were blown. As soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpets, they raised a great shout, and the wall fell down flat. So the people charged straight in ahead into the city and captured it. Then they devoted to destruction by the edge of the sword all in the city, both men and women, young and old, oxen, sheep, and donkeys. Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the land, Go into the prostitute's house and bring the woman out of it and all who belong to her as you swore to her. So the young men who had been spies went in and brought Rahab out along with her father, her mother, her brothers, and all who belonged to her. They brought, brought all her kindred out and set them outside the camp of Israel. They burned down the city and everything in it, only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. But Rahab the prostitute with her family and all who belonged to her, Joshua spared. Her family lived in Israel ever since, for she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Joshua then pronounced this oath saying, Cursed before the Lord be anyone who tries to build the city, this Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn he shall lay it, lay its foundation, and the cost of its youngest he shall set up its gates. So, Lord, so the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was in all the land. Here ends the reading. Let us pray Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah, found on page 92 of the prayer book. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies. From the hands of all who hate us, he promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, should be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Since the tribune wanted to find out what Paul was being accused of by the Jewish leaders, the next day he released him and ordered the chief priests and the entire council to meet. He brought Paul down and had him stand before them. While Paul was looking intently at the council, he said, Brothers, up to this day I have lived my life with clear conscience before God. Then the high priest Ananias ordered those standing near him to strike him on the mouth. At this Paul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. Are you sitting there to judge me according to the law, and yet in violation of the law you ordered me to be struck? Those standing nearby said, Do you dare to insult God's high priest? And Paul said, I did not realize, brothers, that he was a high priest, for it is written, You shall not speak evil of a leader of your people. When Paul noticed that some were Sadducees and others were Pharisees, he called out into the council, 
Brothers, I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. I am on trial concerning the hope of the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dissension began between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the, assemb the assembly was divided. The Sadducees say there is no resurrection or angel or spirit, but the Pharisees acknowledge all three. Then a great clamor arose, and certain scribes of the Pharisees group stood up and contended, We find nothing wrong with this man. What if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him? When the dissension became violent, the tribune, fearing that they would tear Paul to pieces, ordered the soldiers to go down, take him by force, and bring him into the barracks. That night the Lord stood near him and said, Keep up your courage. For just as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must bear witness also in Rome. Here ends the reading. Together, let us pray Canticle 21, the You Are God, the Te Deum Laudamus, found on page 95 of the prayer book. Canticle 21 on page 95. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing an endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white Roman army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty and bounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man, to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Together, let us say the Apostles' Creed found on page 96 of the prayer book, followed by the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Together, let us pray suffrages be found on page 98 of the prayer book. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give, up, give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. 
Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Next are the prayers for the Episcopal Church of the Atonement for the week of July 21st. You can add your own intentions either silently or aloud at home, or you can add them to the comments feed of this broadcast. Hopefully I will see them and be, uh, be able to read them. We pray for the sick, for those in any need or trouble, and for those who have asked for our prayers. We pray for Steve, Rob L., Cheryl, Sean, Jonathan, Devin, Killian, Dennis, Mark, former President Carter, all with COVID-19, Kelly, Miller, Jason, Harry, Tyler, Cecilia, Ron E., Jim, Bill, Andrea, Karen, Janice, John, Kurt, all who mourn, for Canna Deacon, Elizabeth, Jean, David, Thomas, and Greg, who are all priests. For an end to war and violence, especially in the Middle East and in, and in Ukraine, we pray for justice and for an end to violence and division in our neighborhood, city, and nation. For all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Kari, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily, for all families and children in this city and state, for all expectant parents, and for all prisoners. We pray for members of our military services on active duty, especially Celeste and Nate, and for Scott serving as security in Iraq. We pray for Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector, Amanda and Dave, our wardens, and for the members of our vestry, for our presiding bishop-elect, Sean, and for our sister parishes of St. Benedict's and St. Matthew's in Chiapas, Mexico. We give thanksgiving this week for the birthdays of Roy Withero, Alyssa Trapp, Patty Garland, Norlin Statler, Charlie Sega, and we give thanksgiving this week for the wedding anniversary of Michael Chipola and Michael M Miguel Diaz, and for the life profession anniversary of in the Brotherhood of St. Gregory of Brother Ronald Augustine Fox. And we pray for the, the departed, for Nancy Bonilla, Bonilla, William Benefield Sr., and Bob Newhart, and at the anniversaries of their deaths for Elaine K., Muriel Louise Iverson, Karen Winner, Hans J. Cocott, and Wil Wil Wilma Anderson. And we have a prayer for peace for our enemies. O God, the Father of all, whose Son commended us to love our enemies, lead them and us from prejudice to truth, deliver them and us from hatred, cruelty, and revenge, and in your good time enable us all to stand reconciled before you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together, let us pray the general thanksgiving on page 101 of the prayer book. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your mercies, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. This concludes morning prayer. Thank you for joining joining us. Um, you can join us every um, day at 8.30 a.m. here on Google Meet. 
um, for morning prayer. Uh, weekly mass schedule this coming week, um, 7.30 a.m. mass on Monday and Friday. There's a noon mass on Tuesday and Thursday and a 7 p.m. mass on Wednesday. There's a 10 a.m. mass on Saturday, which is a healing mass. Today is Sunday, and the mass schedule is the 8 a.m. mass is just ending. The 9 a.m. mass is just beginning, and there will be an 11 a.m. Um, solemn high mass, which will be broadcast on YouTube. Thank you for being here, everybody. Have a great week. Be kind and be safe.